Hi, my name's John. Welcome to part three in a series of videos on installing a DRO onto this little mini mill. In this third part, I'm going to be installing the X axis. As I've already discussed, the best place to put the scale and the reed head is along the front like that. These are quite big scales and quite big reed heads, and that isn't a great on a room, and you will definitely lock. You'll definitely lose the two lock screw facilities and you'll also lose the ability to use your stops. Uh, there's an awful lot of Y axis travel on this particular mill and the scale that was supplied in the kit actually restricts the Y travel. I brought it all the way forward and I lost about an inch and a half at the back. So I'm going to put the three head in the scale down the back like that. I'm just close to the table as I can get it, it'll end up about there like that and you're going to loss an inch and a half travel at the back which I've lost anyway the easiest way will be to just to build a column and just work on this but I'm not going to do that I'm going to do it leave it assembled like this I'll bring the camera a little bit closer and show you some of my ideas for mounting it quite a bit of surface rust on the back of that table I'll have to clean that off right what I have got there's two holes there two drilled and tap holes six mil ones they were used to hold on the bellows like a dirt shield that goes on there. I'm going to use those two mountain points to put a plate on to attach the pickup head to. This back plate's going to be mounted on there like that, far enough down so you can put a cover on and still be below the level of the table. This part here, which is the part the Y axis moves on, is actually sticking out proud from the bed of the machine. So I'll have to machine a recess in the bottom of there, just to clear that. So that make sure that's lying flat at the minute, it's, it's touching that. So we need a little recess machining down there. This is obviously a nicely machined face, so I can pull straight onto there. That's a machine face, so I can pull straight onto there. The installation should be relatively straightforward. First thing to do, I'll put some blocks on and block it up the get the height I want of that which is going to be probably there which means I have got enough room I'll get the cover this is the cover of the short scale but it'll, it'll show her what I mean so that will be on there and that's below, below the surface of the table so you can have something overhanging the, the back of the table which you often, quite often do so, like, so the first thing to do is measure and machine the bottom of that away so it clears and it's basically up to that up to that slot there up to that little cut out right, so I need 1.5mm machine off that red bit there there's actually a little lip on there which is going to be handy for me because I can simply use that as a register and drop it into the into T-slot to hold that nice and level. Shift things this way a bit. I'll do it in that one. Right. We've got plenty of trouble to get that in there. Clamp it down with two T-bolts and we'll machine it off. I've got a clamp at each end but it's not touching in the middle, it's actually springing. So what I'll do, I'll move it into this slot here and put one more clamp in. Put another clamp in the middle and that'll stop it moving. bit just so I can get it in 
I think I'm going to have enough travel to do it in one cut where it'll be on, the, on its limit I think I've actually got 80 inches on this I need to that got to be there now we can fire it up just touch it off there Set the DRO and weigh it in the 1.5 mil. Four point five. Lock the table off. modified to give it its maximum amount of travel. All this was machine way to get a little bit more. And I'm going to finish off by hand because it's getting starting to get near now. Spare. Quarter of an inch. I've got the back and plate resting on some parallels underneath here. I'm just going to check and make sure it is the same height at both ends. 5.28, 5.27. What we need to do now is Pick these points up where it's going to be mounted. These are going to be drilled in top 5mm. What I'll do, I'll spot through with a 5mm drill and then I use me we drilling Jake to make sure I drill the hole nice and straight and true. You can feel the centre pop in there. We've got two nice marks I'll be able to pick up. Use a 4.2 mil into there. I'll put a clamp on there and I can drill that hole and do the same to the other side. Ready to tap the hole, I found the spiral cut 5mm tap, I knew I had a one. These are much better than the ordinary ordinary taps, especially when you're, when you're power tapping. I've got a 5mm clearance hole. Straight in, nice clean fitted hole, no messing. Wash the swarf out of it. Right, that's one done. We'll turn our attention to the other, the other side. 
just want to clean the rust off the back of here some surface rust on the back piece of the table some finest wet and dry and a scotch brake pad and some oil So I think we've got a movement on the boards, but not a great lot. But there is plenty of adjustment on the on the actual scale. But obviously the straighter you get the back end piece, the easier it is to get the scale straight. Right, so that's that mounted. Next thing is the scale. This is going to go on there like that. And the reed head's going to be mounted onto this piece under here. So the reed head stops still and the scale moves. And put a, probably a cover goes across there. So that's how much distance we're lost and travel on the back. I mean, this didn't come all the way up to touch here anyway. And we've put the, the y axis scale on it a bit on the short side. We're really lost in nothing at all. There's actually two drills and taps, six mil holes underneath there, I think that's six, could be five mil holes underneath there. I want to put a plate on there, so I need to know the distance between the reed head and the back of that casting. So I found a slip gauge, or at least a parallel, that's a good fit in there. I'm going to make this piece out of steel because it isn't very, it's not that thick to get decent threads in. So I need a bit of steel, kind of that thickness. You can see the two holes are a lot better with the, the backing piece off. I found a piece of bright bar, the right thickness. It's got to go up about there and just pick those two holes up. I'll cut a piece off to length. Make it full length, it won't do any harm. I've cut a piece of bar off, I'm just going to square the ends up in the middle of the machine. Just round the edges off a quick rub with the files, all it takes. Right now, we need to transfer the position of these two holes into a piece of metal. I've got a scribe line for the height, I know how high it's got to be, and that parallel there hole at the right height. So, we need to pick up those two holes. What I'm going to do. I've got a 6mm grub screw here. I'm going to screw that into there backwards, like the Allen key side in, and that leaves a nice little sharp point. I'm just going to walk one at a time and drill one at a time. So that goes there like that. I'll just put a spacer piece in the back. 
I mean that's better. So it's lined up, it's on the parallel. If I simply give this a, a tap like that, it has put a nice mark. So I can drill through there, bolt this one on, transfer the mark for the other side. Right, that's the mark we need to pick up. The way to do it is to line one axis up first, then the other one. You can tweak them until you get absolutely spot on in the centre. And that's right bang in the middle of that circle. I'm going with the centre drill first. The bolt holes are actually 5mm not 6. So only the 5mm. And then he has a clearance drill. Just spot on the centre. Centre drill first. That's right in the middle of the circle. We've got the cutting oil. I want to use a counter song head like that, and that one's got to go in from that way. So I'll have to turn it over to the counter sink it, which is not the end of the world, really. But it would have been better if I would have done all the drilling in one setting. So we need to pick up that hole again. You see it's off there because the drill's bending. There'll become a point where the drill goes in without making any noise and without bending, which is basically there. I don't count a single drill. You touch it in there and it's bit it's, it's making the same depth of cut all in your own. Grub screw in the other end, in the other hole. And fasten this, this end on. See, there's a little bit of tolerance on the bolt hole. I need to space that in out the same as it did with the other side. Put them in there. It's hard down against the parallel. Same again, drill the hole to 5mm, turn it over and put the countersink in. As you can see it's made a nice 
little indentation just the same as the other side. There's clearance between the mountain plate and the bracket we've just made. Next thing is to mount the rear head up and spot these two holes through and then it's getting very near to ready for a test. So I need to mark the position of these two mountain pools. I'm just going to bolt in with 4mm bolts on this side. That's a 4.2mm drill. It's got a point on the end. It's a nice fit in the hole. So I put that in there like that and simply scrape back and forward. That's going to give us the correct height. Then I can mark off the distance between the two holes. That's mounted centrally, so basically the pop mark there and the one there. And I can scrape two lanes and that's basically where I want the two four mil holes drilled on top of the two mountain holes. We need to pick up the little centre pop mark, drill it on top of four mil. Mill drill.
the foam at the top. Be careful because these have a habit of breaking. Throw that in the chuck. Much better. That started nice and straight. This is actually a little top wrench that I made at school, so it's 40, 40 odd year old, I've still got it, still works, I still use it quite often. Bastard. Okay, so that's a reed head fastened in place, all tightened up. It certainly looks good. I've made all the wires come out of the left hand of the machine, just keeps them all nice and tidy at one side. Right, I've got it all hooked up now, I'll put some power on. Few of the x-axis. That one's working fine. Nine point two inches, nine inches. That's reasonable. In fact, it's good for a machine of this size. Right, so x-axis is working fine. I'm not going to go through what the screen does, its various functions, that's not what the video is about. It was just simply to show not how to mount a DRO to this particular mill, but some ideas of how it can be done. Right, X axis works, Y axis is fine. Up and down you one, Z axis, that works as well. One thing I will need to do is put a stop on the Y axis. Right, it's actually run out of trouble on the scale before this scale has actually hit the back of the column. So I need to put a stop in, just so it doesn't get wound all the way home and damage the reed head. But basically that's it working fine now. I remember one of the comments on the first video I did um, was that I hadn't put a stop on to stop them from damaging the scale on the Y axis. And there you are, there's a stop. That's the sort of thing you do last when you're finished, not halfway through the installation. It actually hits this stop, a positive stop, before it reaches the travel on the Y axis scale, and also before this hits the column on the back. Right, that's basically me finished with this now. Um, that is covers that can go over the top of the scales if you want to put them on. Personally, I don't think it needs them because all the scales are mounted the right way up, so there's no swarf or shape can get into the into the workings. Uh, the display head has to be mounted somewhere, whether he's going to mount it on the machine or mount it on a wall, I'm not quite sure, but that's that'll be for him to do. I've quite enjoyed doing this. Time wise I'll have a good 10 hours in it. Um, this isn't to, to show you how to mount a DRO on this particular machine, but it'll give you some ideas as to how to mount DROs on different machines. I did uh, did a one on my lathe. I've actually bought a new Miller machine. I've got a Viceroy mill coming and I'll be going to put a three axis on that uh, at a later date. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've enjoyed watching it, click the like button, leave a comment. Anyway, thanks for watching.
Georgia can come and take the bastard thing away now. She hasn't yet. Bye.